Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of Lone Wolf, the Magna Kai series, The Jungle of Horrors. With me again is Kazi. Hello. And last time we managed to reach Hog Street where we went into a shop and we have brought with us enough money to buy this ring. We always had enough money. Um, uh, we, we just we kept it in our other trousers so we had to go back to the inn, get changed, come back. And, oh, uh, I was gonna say we just went outside and like just picked up some recycling and just took it to the local recycling center and yeah, 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 yeah. We're helping out the environment, you know. Being yeah, because we're a good so, wolf. Yeah, we're yeah. environmental wolf. Okay, so let's use our newfound money. Well, look at that, we've got like fifty crowns now, and pay thirty oh. to get the gold ring or the the gray crystal ring. The merchant grins delightfully as he pockets your gold. You take the gray crystal ring from the display case and slip it on onto the index finger of your right hand. It fits perfectly. Mark this gray crystal ring as a special item on your action chart. If you wish to dispose of any special items with the exception of the ring that you have just purchased, the merchant will pay you eight gold crowns for each item you sell. Uh, if only we could have sold, sold all those keys. Yeah, what the fuck? Did we have sold the keys? Is, is there any bullshit here? What about a map? Buy a map. <gasps> Buy a map? <laughs> Do we really want to sell a map? We don't really need the gold. Yeah, but we, but... we don't need... Well, I mean, we just paid 30 gold crown. I want to get some of it back, you know? If we can get rid of shit. Oh, get okay. Alright, let's... Let's sell a map or two. We're probably never going to use some of these old maps anyways. We're always going to new places. Yeah, the, the map of Summerland. We're never going to go back to Summerland. Buddy, our it? homeland? Cal or wait, was Summerland was our homeland? Or was yeah, yeah, so Summerland's our homeland. Cal was okay. the ice caverns. Cal was ah. the Southlands. Don't get rid of that as well. The uh, map of Asagonia, yeah. <laughs> well, Back up earlier, to 50. Why couldn't we have done this option before? So when we came here with that money, we could have just sold four of our maps <sighs> and bought the freaking thing. But apparently, okay. Oh, you're right. We could have just given him like three maps and six gold. <laughs> <sighs> Alright, we'll leave the shop. Oh, we're back up to 50. You book and fuck you, Joe Dever. We can outplay your system. You arrive at a flagstone quadrangle. It is well lit by street lanterns, which hang from the first floor balcony of a large and unusual building. Constructed of blue stone, with silver and scarlet veins running through it. Bricks have been polished to give a mirror like shine. A huge wooden door, branded with copper, dominates the entrance above which a bronze cast depicts a flaming broadsword with the words Temple of the Sword engraved along the blade. Beyond the temple, a street ascends to a stone watchtower. It is built on the peak of a hill and dominates the town. If you have a map of Tharo, you may consult it before choosing any of the following options. Turn to 22. If you have the Magna Kai Discipline of Pactmanship, turn to 327. If you wish to enter the temple, turn to 78. If you wish to ride up to the watchtower, that's 14. So, well, we have only have one option we can use pathfinding. <laughs> to the left of the main door, you notice three symbols engraved in the speckled blue stone. A bed, a horse, and a loaf of bread. You recognize their significance, for you have seen similar markings on hostels and monasteries during your travels in the east. By displaying these symbols, the monks of this temple offers travelers a meal, stabling for their horses, and a bed for the night. If you wish to take advantage of this offer, go there. If you choose not to stay here overnight, you can investigate the watchtower by turning there. So wait, let me get this straight. We have to get pathfinding to look at symbols engraved on a, on a blue stone. Uh, apparently interpreting the symbols? Okay, that makes more sense. That makes perfect sense. Okay, I'll shut up. Uh... <laughs> no, to be fair, why do you need passmanship to notice that the symbols 
for a bed, a horse, and a loaf of bread. I mean, eh. maybe Unless they the worship bread, horses, different. and bed. Okay, that's what I'd worship if I lived in those days. Probably not I'll the horse, but probably the bed. Uh, so, do you want to take advantage or go? To I say take advantage. Let's just take it easy. This is, the, this is Lone Wolf's vacation. <laughs> yeah. Juggle of vacation. Uh, just be is it you or me? I don't know. Here, I can actually read it this time, so I'll read it. <laughs> you dismount and climb the steps leading to the temple doors. An old man in brown robes answers your knock and invites you and Paido inside. A novice attends to your horses. Stepping through the door is like stepping into another world. The air is sweet with incense and the flickering light cast by a long row of squat red candles does little to illuminate the interior. You follow the old man along to a vaulted corridor down several flights of stairs and finally onto a torchlit refractor reflectory. A delicious smell of cooking wafts from an open hatch in the wall together with the sounds of people in the kitchen beyond. Be seated says the old man, pointing to his stout table, stout oak table laid for supper, and enjoy our humble food. May it revive you after your travels and fortify you for the road ahead. Another monk enters the chamber, carrying two steaming plates of meat stew. He sets them down before you and blesses the food with the words of Gajkog Zutag. You are hungry after your day's journey and must now eat a meal or lose three endurance points. <laughs> eat or else. <laughs> if you wish to eat the appetizing stew, go there. If you choose not, if you choose to eat the meal from a, your backpack instead, go there. If you decide to go without food, deduct three endurance points and go there. I say, let's just eat the meal. It, it'd be kind of rude not to. The stew tastes as good as it smells. And you both make short work of your meal. The monks smile and nod their heads approvingly. Come, the dean wishes to see you before you retire, says one, motioning you to follow as they leave the refectory. The dean's chamber is a domed hexagonal room hung with tapestries depicting strange and grotesque creatures. Numerous plinths stand upon the richly carpeted floor, each supporting large bowls filled to the brim with a silvery liquid. A gust of air disturbs the tapestry on the far wall. Seconds later, it is moved aside to reveal an elderly man in a hooded black robe. Have you eaten? he asks, his voice strangely cold and monotonal. Yes, master, the monks reply with one voice. Good, he says, stepping closer. Give us. The monks depart, clicking the door shut behind them. Gradually, the light in the chamber grows dimmer. If you have the magnified discipline of divination, 343, if you don't possess the skill, 190. Uh-oh, now I'm worried. Oh, your futile quest is over, mortal, says the hooded man, his emotionless voice like a spike stabbing at your mind. Instinctively, you reach to your weapon, but your hands begin to shake. You cannot control your fingers. You glance at Pido and see that he, too, is shivering uncontrollably. Suddenly, a wave of pain tears at your stomachs and your legs buckle. You groan in agony and drop to your knees, clutching at your burning stomach. Pido lets out a scream of anguish and falls unconscious at your side. You cannot but envy his oblivion as the terrible pain courses through your body. If you have the Magikai discipline of curing and have reached the rank of primate... <laughs> I forgot that was one of our ranks. <laughs> and turn there. If you do not have skill and have yet to reach this level, go there. So I oh, guess we us. got curing and it just saved our life. Sort of. You must all your strength to fight the deadly poison which has infiltrated your blood. Your improved power of curing suppresses the pain and slows the progress of the insidious toxin, enabling you to face your would-be assassin. A flicker of surprise registers in the cold black eyes of your opponent as you stagger to your feet and unsheathe your weapon. Lose five endurance points and turn to 113. Eh, we can heal that in three pages. Yeah, we'll be fine. Kajaki Yamas! 
as it's the monk pulling back the hood of his black robe. Did he just like curse? I think so. <laughs> I think you just cursed. You gasp in shock as you stare upon the ghastly transformation. The monk's face is writhing and contorting, and his skin tightens and grows darker. Tattered flesh drops from his sunken cheeks and hangs in festoons beneath the exposed lower jaw. A snake like tongue, black and narrow, flickers between curved fangs that have risen from the lower jaw. A sickening dread fills your heart as you recognize the creature standing before you. It is a hellgast, a nightmarish agent of the Dark Lords. Its demonic eyes glow like red hot coals as it shrieks and raises its claw tipped hands. If you possess the summer sword, turn here and probably one shot the dude. Thank fuck. Remember, this was the guy that we needed the magic spear for all that time back. Like oh, kicking yeah. our asses all the time. God, now we got the summer sword. Screw, screw that, that magic butter. spear. Screw that magic spear thing. All right. Golden fire erupts along the blade of the sun sword. You raise it above your head. The hell gas shrieks and steps back, its eyes glowing red with fear and loathing. Recognizes the power you wield, the power that is the bane of its Dark Lord Masters, the power that can bring about their total destruction. So we're gonna fight the Nog Hellgast. It's got 34 combat skill, which is pretty good, and endurance is 48, it's pretty high as well. He's a pretty meaty boy. This creature is immune to mind blasts, but not Psy Surge. Unless you possess the Magna Kai discipline of Psy Screen, you must reduce your endurance points by two points at the beginning of every round if you fight uh -oh. this creature. Shit, we didn't take it. If you completed the Law Circle of the Spirit, you may increase your uh -oh. combat skill by two points for the duration of this combat. Remember okay. the double all endurance point losses sustained by the enemy due to the power of the Summer Sword. Oh, so technically he has 24. Okay. Since we can double so... the damage. But we need to finish him quick. Yep. The longer it drags out, the more damage we're going to take. Oh my god, so many oh. bonuses. A bitch. Shot. One shot. One shot. One shot. One shot. Yes. <laughs> one shot. Double kill. Although we still took two points. Damage. Some special ability to the bastard. <sighs> <laughs> A wretched cry of pain and despair fills the chamber as you strike the killing blow. The hell gas falls, its flesh transforming into a putrid green gas that seeps from the vents into its tattered robe. Your mind reels at what has just occurred, but you dare not dwell on the fearful implications, for the poison in your system is beginning to overwhelm your healing power. You must act quickly if you are to save both yourself and Pido from the fatal toxin that is flowing through your veins. If you have any lamps or rhythms, elixir, or old herb, odes, odes herb, turn there. If you do not possess any of these, go there. Well, it's a good thing we got like one lamps for. Oh my god, they ripped off our backpack with all our good potions. I'm so lucky we got another one. <laughs> you force yourself to swallow the potion. Yeah, swallow, bitch. Know you like it. <laughs> <laughs> and to stay conscious long enough for it to take effect. Gradually, you feel your strength returning. The pain and nausea disappear, and your limbs stop their uncontrollable shivering as the potion and your latent Kai skill neutralize the toxin in your blood. Now you use your skill to try to save your companion's life. Placing your hands on his chest, you transfer the warmth of your healing power into Paido's poison body, breaking down the toxin by degrees. The treatment is slow and laborious, and it is the dawn of the following day before you know for sure if your skill saved his life. Oh, so he could die. The flicker of an eyelid and the beat of sweat are the first signs of Pido's recovery. Slowly, he stirs to conscious, waking from a sleep that was so nearly his last. He can remember nothing of the ordeal, and when you tell him it, all that has happened, he shakes his head in disbelief. A hellgast? He says, incredulous. How can it be? <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> the sir... Uh... The servants of the Dark Lord Nag have infiltrated this monastery! You reply. 
Uh, is this still me? It's still you. They have kept themselves hidden, but I fear the day is fast approaching when they will rise up and wreak havoc in this town. Already, they know our true identities. I wager they know why we're here. This is bitter news, Lone Wolf, says Pido, his face etched with worry. We can afford to delay no longer. If Talistro falls to Dark Lord Nag before we reach the Darnog, then the quest is lost. It is a sobering thought, but you do not dwell on it. You help Pido to his feet and cast your eyes around the chamber in search of an exit. Turn to that page. I just realized, like, this book is one of the, I think it's the first time we've actually spoken I, like I know we've spoken one or two lines here and there in other books, but here we're regularly speaking, which is really yeah. weird. Yeah, it's like if Link started speaking. What? 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 Well, excuse me, princess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. We've already recovered our damage. Oh my God, we have. Pathetic Helgast. One of the balls begin to emit a faint humming sound. The surface of its silvery liquid swirls and glows brighter, casting a phosphorant light onto the dome ceiling. The sparkling mist slowly clears and a strange image takes shape, condensing and forming into something wholly alien, something that resembles the head of a monstrous fly. Its great multifaceted eyes stare down at you, gleaming darkly with black fire like two huge clusters of evil jewels. An ash oka, nanoka nag, booms a ghastly rasping voice. Then, with a stifled rage, cry of rage and recognition, the image clouds over, the light fades to a dull glow. The terrible visage of Dark Lord Nag has disappeared. By the gods, gasps Pido, shocked at the core by what he's seen. What manner of beast was that? But you do not reply, for you sense that he already knows the dreadful answer. Swiftly, you search the chamber. Behind the throne-like chair of chilled stone, you find several useful items. A sword, a bow, three arrows, hell yeah. Oh, I've got no maroon. <laughs> Just one arrow now. And enough food for two meals. I'm definitely taking those. Also, set into the back of the chair is a lever. It activates a portal in the opposite wall. The tapestry that conceals it is drawn aside, and you can see a stairway flanked by torches descending to a passage far below. Come, says Pido. This room chills my blood. You move to follow him as he descends the stairs, stopping briefly to kick over the bowl of glowing silvery liquid that projected the image of Dark Lord Nog. I'm just kicking it out of spite. <laughs> Dickhead douche. I'm starting to like Pido now. The stairs lead down to a vast network of catacombs that stretch in every direction. It would be easy to lose yourself in this maze of tunnels. But your Kai tracking skills, heightened by the pressing need to escape from the monastery, help you avoid the hazardous dead ends of these sprawling br burial vaults. Following the sound of dripping water, you discover a circular stone trapdoor in the ceiling. Pido cups his hands around your foot and lifts you nearer to the tunnel roof, enabling you to open the trapdoor. Early morning daylight streams into the passage as you lift up, as you lift a slab of whetstone and slide it aside. You have emerged at the courtyard on the north side of the monastery. Two monks stand guard at the double doors of a low timber frame building on the other side of the paved enclosure. Fortunately, a line of bushy fruit trees that encircles the courtyard provide all the cover you need to avoid their watchful eyes. You crouch in the shadows and must watch or and watch as the monks leave their posts and enter the building minutes later the doors swing open and they reappear both on horseback and ride off through the archway i it went blurry right as i said that all right they ride off on an archway to the right the courtyard is now empty but you curse their departure for the horses they are riding belong to you and pido if you oh, wish to enter no. the stables turn to 54. If you wish to escape on foot through the archway, turn 72. Nah, let's go to the stables. Let's nab ourselves some horses. The stable is full of fine horses. All of them are sound and sturdy as the mounts given to you by Lord Adamus. Pido acts as lookout while you saddle up two black stallions. You're making the final adjustments to their bridles when Pido hisses a warning. 
whole monk's coming this way! You mount your fresh steeds and gallop out the stables, scattering the startled monks who had just reached the door. In an act of desperation, one of the monks unsheathes his sword and hurls it at your back. The deadly blade spins through the air with alarming accuracy. Oh. Pick a number from the random number table. If you have the Magnetic Disciplines of Hunt Mastery and Divination, add three to the number you've picked. Wait, not or. It has to be and. Oh. Shit. Oh, okay. We didn't get the low number. Alright, I'll try to read this. It's still kind of blurry. The sword whistles past your head and gouges a chunk of stone. I I can't read it. It's, it's it gouges blurry. a chunk of stone. <laughs> gouges a chunk of stone from the courtyard arch. You hear the monk shouting, and you dig in your heels, steering your horse through the archway and along a narrow street that leads to the quadrangle. At this early hour, there are a few obstacles to slow your escape as you gallop headlong through the twisting streets of Tharo. It's not until you reach the town's north gate that you finally rein in your horse to a halt. The north gate guards, tired after the long night's watch, grumble wearily at your demand for the gate to be opened. What's the hurry? growls one guardsman. Matter of life and death, is it? sneers the other. The portcullis finally clanks open, and you leave town. Riding the broken dirt track towards the distant hills of the frontier town of Sayada. Grey brown grasses brush your shins as you cross this wild, uncultivated plain. Accompanying your ride is an unnatural silence which is broken only occasionally by the courting of ravens circling like vultures overhead. By midday, you're among the hills. The terrain becomes increasingly rocky, undulating like a storm tossed ocean. The tall plain grass has given way to sad little plants, scraggy and deformed, stunted by the winds that sweep down from the barren wastes of Ogier. The track passes through a narrow valley, where a small stone cabin stands beside the entrance to a disused mineshaft. As you approach the cabin, you see a face at the window. If you wish to stop at the cabin, turn to 85. If you wish to investigate the mine, 120. Or if you wish to continue along the valley, 152. I want to check out the cabin. Yeah, we have some dudes system. staring at us. Might as well. Yeah. Or a face staring at us. You peer through the tiny circular window where you saw the face. But the gloomy interior looks deserted. The stone cabin consists of two rooms. One at the front and one at the rear. Anyone at home? You call in a friendly voice. But you receive no reply. Silently, you motion to Pido to investigate the rear of the hut while you enter the front door. If you had the Magkai discipline of divination, which we don't, so we have to go to page 298. Oh. As soon as you step into the cabin, you're attacked by a man wielding a pickaxe handle. He's a lean, hollow-eyed rogue with a vivid scar. He runs in a ragged line from his forehead to his chin. He shouts a curse and makes a swing for your head. Fuck you. Unless you have the magnified discipline of hunt mastery, reduce your combat skill by three points for the first two rounds of combat due to the surprise of the attack. Aha, bitch, you didn't surprise us because we've got hunt mastery. We knew we were going to be ambushed and we came in anyways. I mean, technically, we we're breaking into this guy's house, so he's got every right to defend himself. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Uh, we're going to get a bit of a lick with him. Ah, it's alright. We'll heal it back up. Oh man, I don't think the dude deserves to die. That's like the ultimate well, the dude attacked us. He, he got dead. The rogue slumps dead at your feet. Seconds later, the door to the back room splinters and breaks as Pido hacks, hacks through it with the sword. Why can't you so long? You ask cheekily when finally the door gives way and he staggers, sweating and exhausted, into the room. He smiles ruefully and pauses to get his breath back. He invites you to come and see what he has found in the back room. Small sacks filled with nuggets of silver and stacked in a huge mound that reaches almost to the ceiling. No wonder he fought so desperately, you say, staring at the hoard of treasure. There's enough silver here to pay a king's ransom! You may take some treasure before you leave. Each sack of silver counts as one backpack item. 
If you wish yep. to leave the cabin and continue up the valley, go there. If you wish to investigate the mine, go there. It says here you're allowed to take as many as you can. So, so yeah, fill up that backpack. <laughs> drop in two meals and we're taking. <laughs> we're rich! All right, investigate the cabin or the mine. Oh, sorry, leave the cabin or we'll investigate the mine. Let's say just leave the cabin and continue up the valley. I, I I don't know about the mine. I'm a little weary of it. Okay. The track continues track along the oh god. The track continues along the rock strewn valley floor through a thicket of stunted trees and climbs slowly towards a ridge of hills. Their peaks worn smooth by the countless years of wind and harsh weather. You stop briefly at a babbling stream to allow your horses to drink, and your rumbling stomach reminds you that you're hungry and need of food. You must now eat a meal or lose three endurance. And mastery. When the horses have quenched their thirst, <laughs> you continue your climb to the ridge. You soon reach the crest and stare down on a sight that sends shivers down your spine. In the Ridge. distance, you see a pall of, te of dead black smoke rising into the sky, and its base, a fortress wall, and a cluster of cottages are feeding the greedy flames. Sayada burns. To the north of the doomed town, an army of black-clad troops covers the hill. The black wolf-head banners of Ogia the sway on log poles, fluttering grimly above the ranks of the merciless horde. Along the track, a great procession of men, women, children come towards you. Some on horseback, some in carts, some with bundles of possessions clutched in their soot blackened chests. They stumble forward in silence, their eyes filled with terror and despair. A soldier, bleeding from a wound to his head, rides past the crest, shouting, Turn back! Turn back! The armies of darkness are coming! Got this one. Oh my god, this guy looks terrified. Go that way, dick. Horses. That's a muscular horse. I mean, look at how thick those fucking legs are. Well, the front ones, anyways. I've had That's horses pretty... before, so it's. Well, it's got one of those tufts at the bottom of each of them. One of them pony types. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. It is impossible to continue along the track eastward. The dirt road. Oh, it just went all blurry. Uh, the dirt road is blocked with refugees from Sida, Sayada, and the Ogian Horde are poised to launch an attack from the hills. Only two courses of action are left open to you. Um, you can turn back along the track, or you can ride west across the hills towards the Mordrill Forest. Consult the map at the front of the book before making your decision. Map at the front of the book, but we don't be looking at the map given to us. Hog Swamp. I guess. I don't know. This would be the Denarg swamp here. Uh, either turn back on the track, right west, across the hills towards the north. Here we are. Oh, there he is. Where do I? Right here. So, Syed is here. Oh, I think I see it now. Syed is the one right next to the big lake, and the Mordral Forest is below it. Okay. So run backwards towards Tharo, run into... Now, this book is called The Jungle of Horrors. I don't know if jungle and forest starts in, it's in this book, but... <laughs> yeah, there hasn't been much jungle. Go into jungle, the jungle horrors. or go along the track. I guess, I guess let's go in the jungle and get our head hit on a tree. No, it's it. been good to us so far. <laughs> you and Pido wheel your horses around and follow the crests of the ridge. Expertly, you manage to steer them down a steep bank of loose shale, and then on a brisk pace along a dried-out gully. Soon, the gully stems a stream of sparkling water fed by, underground, by an underground spring. A rumble, 
like a sound of a distant storm, warns you that the vast army of Zorgon, war chief of Ogia, is now less than 20 miles away. Anna? It's very orcish, isn't it? <clears throat> you follow the stream until it enters a long corridor of towering trees that descend towards the bank of a swift flowing brook, a tributary of the river Syad. You stop here briefly to bathe your faces in the icy water and to stare at the mass of blue green giant trees that fill the western horizon. The Marjol Forest, says Pedo, a note of trepidation in his voice. It was once a wondrous forest, a place of light and goodness. The trees grew strong and the birds and beasts were the fairest of any forest breed. But the Mordrill has grown dark and dismal of late. The Denarg encroaches, feeding its sickness to the soil and poisoning the saplings and the creatures that dwell there still. It is a doomed forest, doomed to become part of the Denarg swamp. You remount your horse and cross the brook. As you climb the opposite bank, you notice a set of freshly made tracks in the soft earth. If you've got the Magnified Discipline of Hatmanship, 256. If you don't, 342. And since we do... Can't read it. At first, you think that the tracks are those of the Black Bear, the paw prints being of a similar size and depth. But a closer examination changes your mind. These prints were left by a biped, a two-footed animal that walks upright. You've never, you've never before come across tracks like these, and judging from the size of the prints, you'd be happier to avoid the creature that made them. Alright, let's avoid it then. You urge your horse up the steep bank and across the fallen branches that litter the trail beyond. Less than a mile from the brook, you hear the sound of rushing water. The track bears north and you see a roaring waterfall cascading into a rocky pool, its surface lost in a cloud of fine spray. A huge tree has fallen across the pool, creating a bridge. The track leads straight to it. You are halfway across the tree bridge, looking down at the swirling spray and foaming water below, when a ghastly howl rings out above the thunder of the waterfall. You look up and stare slack-jawed at the creature that is advancing towards you across the tree bridge. Well, so much for avoiding that creature. You don't really oh get an my option, <clears throat> The creature gives a strange snickering cry as as slowly as it edges nearer and nearer. It is a huge, pear-shaped beast with a hunchback and a white lizard head. Awkwardly, it shuffles upright on two hairy paws. At first glance, it looks as if two totally separate creatures have been joined together at the waist. The lower half is covered with a coarse, spiky fur, and the upper body is pale and hairless, heavily veined, with long snowy oh it just went blurry uh with long sinewy forearms it raises its snout to savor the smell of your frightened horse and opens its fanged jaws if you have a bow and wish to use it 17. <laughs> if you don't have a bow don't wish to use it now we're using it we got maximum arrows yeah why not your horse is panic stricken tree bridge is too narrow for it to turn around and Pido's man is so close behind that you're unable to back up without risk of sending them both over the edge. Pick a number from the random number table. If you've completed the law circles of fire and light, add three to the number you've picked. Uh, have we completed? Ooh, we don't no, have No, just fire. We need animal control for that. Okay. Shit. Oh. Fuck me. Alright, let's see it. The arrow misses its mark by several yards, streaking into the forest behind the creature. There is no time for a second shot. You shoulder your bow and make ready to draw a hand weapon as the beast closes in to attack. Turn to page 333. The slimy stench of the creature drives your horse wild with fear forcing you to dismount and advance along the tree bridge to meet it. Suddenly, there is a fearful cry as your panic-stricken horse careers backwards into Pido's mount. He fights to keep control of his own frightened horse, but the panic is infectious, and, with a crack of splintering wood, their stamping hooves split the edge of the tree bridge. 
You watch with horror as both horses fall headlong into the watery abyss. <gasps> no! Pido leaps from his mount as it falls, grabbing hold of the edge of the splintered wood. But it's wet, and you can see his finger is slipping. Instinctively, you move to save him, but the stinging lash of a clawed paw reminds you of the creature you must face first. That, that's, he did a Yoshi jump. He jumped off the horse onto the fucking bridge. Uh, <laughs> jump. There's no way to describe it. <laughs> Jumps off of it. It's got shit combat skill, but it's got 50 endurance. This creature is so. immune to my blast, but not Psy Surge. Unless you're the Magnakai discipline of Psy Screen, reduce your combat skill for two points for the duration of the combat. But the creature is also attacking you with the power of its mind. Eh, that's we can take it. Strange that the that this creature has like psychic ability. It's not the first it's one we come strange. across. There's, there's loads of creatures. Yeah, that I know, but it, it it just seems strange to me. Like this is like a hulking beast type of situation. Yeah, it, that, more of a brute than a than something you'd expect to be able to. Yeah. And it's a kill. Two shot. The foul creature howls its death cry and topples over the edge. Before it is out of sight, you turn and run along the tree bridge. Your hand outstretched to grab Pido's arm. Just in time, you save him. A moment later, and he would have joined the anafeg and plummeted into the spray-filled pool. And there's the creature's hand. I mean, if we found it one second later, it'd be like sticking his middle finger up at us. Like, fuck you. Oh, you dickheads. Killed us. <laughs> As opposed to the Terminator thumbs up. I was actually thinking the Terminator thumbs up when I first saw that picture. <laughs> For a few minutes, you stare silently at the pool below. Nothing stirs in the seething waters to record the loss of your horses or the passing of the dreadful Annabeg. All three have disappeared without trace. The distant thunder of battle pervades your thoughts, prompting you to leave the tree bridge and move deeper into the Mordral forest. The tall trees become denser, often forcing you to turn your body sideways in order to make any progress. Gradually, dense undergrowth turns to a carpet of moss and blue-black lichen which clings to your boots like mud. A chill overwhelms you as a thick and pearly mist seeps from the cracks beneath the trees. The many sounds of the forest have disappeared, to be replaced by a cold and airy silence. If you are in need of tincture of oxidine or old herb, turn to 237. If you need neither of these items, turn to 91. Uh, these were mentioned earlier when the hell gas burnt us. Burnt our stomach. Yeah. Wondering if it's like an ongoing medicine that we need to grab. Maybe it got burnt earlier. Like more this... badly burnt. Is it is it one of those things that uh that we got it that we could get addicted to? Possibly. Uh, I'm thinking it's more to do with, uh, you know. I think one of them could be the drug, but I'm thinking, the Hellgast. I might have to go back and check this, but I'm suspecting. You know, because we had curing, we could we got rid of the um, what he did to our stomachs. He burnt it or something. I'm guessing if we didn't have it, he would have done something permanent to us where we'd have to keep on taking medicine. Like if we didn't have oh, the potion with us. I see. Something like that. It could be like an ongoing thing in our book. But we don't need yeah. it, so we're good. It's, it's very blurry. Twilight is approaching. Well, not that fucking film. <laughs> As the sky above darkens, a blackbird flies among the upper branches, emitting a shrill cry which sounds unnaturally loud in the silent forest. It settles, stares at you for a few minutes, then flaps away. Hang on a second. We've seen that before. Very first book, you remember there was that black bird? And then it went and warned one of the, um, one of the lieutenants of the Dark Lords. Oh yeah, <laughs> it did. Vordak. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm suspecting that could be the similar thing. Uh, okay. Uh, a little later, you stumble upon a clearing. Shafts of ghostly moonlight pour through a gap in the black canopy of leaves, revealing a mound of earth rising out of the forest mist. You are both exhausted after the day's events and agree to stop here to rest. Pido takes a gold crown from his pocket 
and tosses it in the air to decide who should take the first watch. Heads or tails, he asks, and the crown clenched in his fist. If you have divination, turn to 11. Oh, you call cheat. heads. Yeah, if you call heads, 274, or tails, 66. Uh, I would flip a coin if I had one near me and go with that situation. Do you have a coin near you? Uh, I have a coin app on my phone. In, uh, flip Good that. enough, I guess. All right, consult the app. Okay, app says heads. Okay, heads it is. Pido reveals the I... coin. Oh, sorry, it's near you. I'll do it since I can read it. Yep. Pido reveals the coin. You have chosen correctly. You, you, that got blurry. <sighs> you decide to take the second watch and settle yourself down for some much needed rest. The gray earth is soft and spongy and provides excellent mattress. You pull your warm kite cloak around your shoulders and slip into a deep, dreamless sleep. Your three endurance. Four hours later, you take over watch. Your vigil passes uneventfully, and as the darkness of night gives way to the gloomy grey of dawn, you wake your companion and prepare to set off once more. Read? No. Your sense of time slips away as you trek through the seemingly endless expanse of bleak grey trees. Slowly, you become aware that you are on an incline, and as your passage becomes steeper, you notice large outcrops of pitted volcanic rock. We're approaching the Dinar Crater, says Pedo, his quietly spoken words echoing loudly through the eerie forest. Suddenly, you recall the words of Lord Remoa during your period of preparation in Elzion. The Dinar occupies the crater of an ancient and massive volcano. Once it was a large jungle of verdant vegetation, but now it is a cancerous wound that poisons all who dwell there. By noon, you climb the top of the lip of the crater and begun your descent. Gradually, the tall straight trees of the Mordral Forest thin out, giving way to twisted trunks and stunted saplings as the land sinks deeper and deeper. Imperceptibly, the forest ends and the swamp begins. The ground is softer and tall, black rushes appear in clumps around misty pools, misty pools of stagnant water. From tortured husks of trees hanging thorny vines, as tough and as cruel as sharpened steel wire. So thickly are they entwined around some trees that they have strangled them, leaving empty coils where the trunks have rotted away. The stench of decay fills your nostrils in the humid yet cold air. You wade through ankle deep slime for nearly an hour before reaching the edge of a huge murky pool. Uh, whirls and eddies disturb its surface, warning of the creatures that lurk below. If you have the Magnetic Discipline Pathmanship and have reached the rank of Tutelary, turn to 203. If you wish to skirt around the pool to the north, 36. Skirt around to the south, 300. Pathmanship! Ah, uh, still blurry. Your improved high skill warns you that to the north, a tribe of hungry swamp creatures are lurking at the edge of the pool in search of prey. You and Pido would provide an excellent meal for these beasts. To the south, the track takes you away from the heart of the swamp, and consequently, further away from your goal. So, if you wish to go north and brave them, 36. If you wish to go south, which is the detour, 300. Jungle vacation, I guess we go south. A froth of green scum marks the edge of the pool, and you use it as a guide to avoid stepping too close to the water. On your left, the pools become more numerous until you find yourselves walking a narrow strip of mossy mounds flanked by dark water. By the gods! Grumbles Pido, slapping insects from his face. How I wish for some blurriness! I wish for some good solid ground rather than this spongy muck. As if in answer to his request, you see a spur of volcanic rock looming out of the mud ahead, forming a causeway above the pools of greasy water. You follow it, soon it splits in two. One spur disappears to the west, and the other continues to the south. If you have the magnified discipline of Nexus and have reached the rank of Primate, 326. If you wish to take the west spur, 105. 
or continue along the south spur, one, two, three. Now, because you're asking us about one. Nexus, and because we're near a volcano, I'm thinking this is to do with noxious fumes. Oh. And there's volcanic rock, vo volcanic rock, looming out of the mud ahead. So I'm thinking the volcanic rock is going to be emitting some noxious gases. If we continue going ahead, we'll probably breathe it in and die, or we'll get hurt. So I'm saying we take west. Okay, that that sounds logical to me. I agree. Eventually, the volcanic spur slopes back into the stinking mire, and once more you find yourselves ankle deep in cold black ooze. A chilling howl drifts across the swamp from the north, and for a few fleeting seconds, you can hear no scuttling, slithering, or any small noise. You're hungry and must now eat a meal, but we're going to use Hunt Mastery or lose your endurance. Probably eat some bugs or something. You arrive at a mound where a tree bearing blood red fruit ha overhangs a pool of crystal clear water. You stop to rest and to dislodge the tiny leeches that are feasting on your legs. Pido yeah. climbs the tree to scan the horizon. He carries with him a star guider, homing device invented by the Elder Magi to enable their flying ships to navigate in the dark. It is sensitive to the vibrations given off by collinium crystals. The spire of the Temple of Orido is solid collinium, and the Elder Magi have set Pido's Star Guider to home in on the vibrations emitted by the spire. By following the direction of the signals, it is hoped that you will be able to find the Lost Temple. Whilst Pido is busy adjusting the Star Guider, you decide to investigate your surroundings. If you wish to examine the Red Fruit, 301. If you wish to examine the Pool of Water, 2. Or if you decide to sit back and wait for Pido to finish his readings, turn to 177. Red Fruit, Red Fruit, Red Fruit. You want Red Fruit? Oh yeah, I'm on All right. All right, we'll do right through. We just ate! Yeah? What's some dessert? <laughs> the red skin fruit mm. is the size of an orange, and its peel is similar in texture to an orange peel. If you have the magnified discipline of Hunt Mastery, 148, if you wish to pick one of these juicy looking fruits, 290, you decide not to touch them, 177. Your Magna Kai discipline reveals to your experienced eye that these fruits are not what they appear. The tree is dead and incapable of producing fruit. They are carnivorous animals that have taken on the outward appearance of juicy ripe fruits <laughs> in order to snare the unwary. If you choose to attack one of these fruits, 245. If you choose not to disturb them, 177. Now, here's my logic. We've been attacked okay, by trees and a door, which is both, you know, you know, wood. Wood is attacking us. Now we have the chance to get revenge on a tree, on its fruit. Okay. I, don't I say know. we attack we the fruit. Over... We couldn't overcome the door that well. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm worried. Our skills have increased now. Okay. I reckon we can take oh. it. All I'm right. Attack let's... these oranges. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. Your first blow smashes the soft fruit to a pulp. At this, the other fruits drop from the tree, springing open as they hit the ground. Long, thin, fleshy legs emerge from their squat bodies, and they scuttle away into the surrounding marsh at an alarming speed. Turns 177. Oh, that was pointless. I guess, I guess we defeated it. That, that number is the same as if we just waited for Pido. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing if we ate it, we'd probably die or something. Probably. Or it'd probably, like attack our face. Yeah. When Pido finally climbs down from the tree, his face betrays his anxiety. What is wrong? You ask impatiently. There's no signal, he replies. I've scanned every direction with the Star Guider, but it can detect no colonium signal. It isn't damaged, of that I'm sure. It's simply as if the temple has disappeared. You take the device from Pido's hand and climb to the twisted tree trunk. He shouts instructions and you set the Star Guider into operation, scanning the distant horizon and waiting for the telltale click that will reveal the direction of the Lost Temple of the Elder Magi. But Pido is right, there is no signal, and without a signal, there's no hope of finding the Lost Stone of Arado. You're about to abandon the search and jump down from a tree, when you see something on the northern horizon that you hadn't noticed before. An island of red volcanic rock rises out of the mire, 
one of four flat-topped islands grouped in a diamond, close to the eastern edge of the crater. Perhaps the temple is on the other side of that island? Perhaps that is why the... Wait, am I saying this? No, 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 I'm definitely not saying it. That's probably in that head. Uh, perhaps the temple is on the other side of the island? Perhaps that is why the star guider will emit no signal? You climb down and ask Pido what he thinks. He stares to the north and ponders the problem. Yes, it is possible, he says thoughtfully. It, it is just possible. It just, it's so crazy, it just might work. Hope returns, and your spirits rise with the expectation of finding the lost temple beyond the island of Red Rock. You set off without delay, anxious to cover the 10 mile trek before the sun sets and darkness engulfs the Danag. For the most part, the swamp mire is firm underfoot, and the inhabitants pose no problems that cannot be solved by a few shouts or well placed weapon blows. But, as the sky darkens and you draw nearer to the plateau, the going becomes more difficult. A carpet of vines, thick with mould, covers the surface of muddy holes and hollows. Often a seeming puddle proves to be a bottomless fissure. Progress has become so slow, you fear you'll never reach the island before dark. Uh, uh... Okay, I can, I can read for now. Pido is leading the way across a tangled mat of barbed vines when a wave disturbs a muddy ooze below. Suddenly, the great head of a silver swamp python bursts through the rotting creepers and raises its tree-thick coils high in the air. Awesome jaws set with double-tiered fangs tower above you, glistening in the fading light. A drop of venom falls from the fangs and sets the quagmire boiling. Oh my god. That's some scary shit right there. Hidden the eyes. Yeah, it's like it's like the Slytherin dragon or something. If you have the Kai discipline of animals, it's kind of blurry. Command and have reached the rank of primate, go there. If you do not have the skill, go no, there. Just... The great snake flicks its tongue and lunges forward, intent on consuming you both in its massive jaws. <laughs> Owing to the swiftness of his attack, you do not have time to use a bow. Unless you possess the Magnakai Discipline of Curing, and have reached the rank of Primate, double all endurance points losses you sustain during the combat due to the snake's venomous bite. Luckily we got Curing, so we should be okay. It's got a huge amount of endurance, 60. Yeah. We are just fighting very meaty things this, this time around. Oh, Either yeah. that or that's just become the average oh, because we're getting stronger. Yeah, this is not a good start. Nah. Better. Looking for a kill. Even average rolls are going to be bad. Oh, crap. We're getting a lot of average low rolls. I think we'll win, but if we keep getting average rolls, we're going to lose a lot of health. Okay. Next, next, next attack. Yeah. Good kill. Pretty decent. We'll heal up in like right. three pages. Oh, no, yeah, sorry. Yeah, we'll That's be right. fine. Two pages. Uh, five pages. Back to there we go. Um, the arrival of the Swamp Python frightened away the crawling denizens of the mire. And now they are returning to satisfy their curiosity. Hordes of slithering lizard beasts gather at the edge of their floating morass, inching their way nearer as they assess your strengths and weaknesses. Relentlessly, you push your way through the soggy vegetation until you reach the jagged rock wall of the island, urged on all but all the way by a hissing of chorus of swamp creatures. Still blurry. Nah. Long streamers of moss-covered vines hang down the red rock wall huge numbers, inviting you to climb onto the plateau above. After the uncertain ground of the swamp, the hard, jagged rock is a welcome relief. You make good progress, reaching the top just as the sun is sinking into a sea of scarlet mist that shrouds the eastern Danark. In the failing light, you discover a trail that winds northwards 
through the knee-high foliage. If you have the Magnified Discipline of Pathmanship, 108. If you don't, 335. Uh, we've used Pathmanship a lot this time around. Yeah. I mean, in the jungle, it would be helpful. Yeah. Well, it used to be jungle. It's now this evil swamp thing. Even in the failing light, you can see that this trail is frequently used. The spongy vegetation is crushed flat and a profusion of tracks are imprinted on the loamy soil. The tracks were made by man-sized creatures, barefooted and web-toed. Close to the main trail winds another, less obvious track. For some reason, someone or something has gone to great lengths to keep this trail secret. If you wish to follow the well-trodden trail, 335. If you wish to follow the secret trail, 330. You know we're going for those secrets. I'm going to save here. Alright. Secret, secret. <laughs> a full moon and a cloudless sky make your passage along the secret path much easier. It follows a tortuous route through the tall plants, around mossy bounds of crawling insects, past the dark entrances to underground warrens, and skirts the fringe of a thicket of trees. Pido halts and crouches down, ignoring the bloated spiders that scuttle around his knees, and points through a gap in the trees to a settlement of crudely made huts. Dark shapes move between them, human once, but far from human now. Kagrim, whispers Pido, with fear in his voice. The man-beasts of the Nag. In the distant past, the Gagrim were gentle primitive folk, who lived as one with the animals and the birds, cared for by the Elder Magi in their jungle paradise. But the Danag has changed, and so too have the Gagrim, poisoned by the evil that's conquered the land. If you wish to approach the huts, turn to 172. If you choose to avoid the Gagrim, and continue along the secret track, 229. What do you think? Mm -hmm. No, I, I mean, we probably should continue along the secret track to find whatever secret there is. But I kind of also want to approach the huts just to be like, hi. Yeah, I'll just I'll <laughs> say hello. How bad could it you be? You want to say hello? Yeah. Okay. Stealthily, you approach the huts, using your Kai hunting skills to muffle the sound of your passage through the foliage. Unfortunately, Pido is unused to such woodcraft. He fails to see a clutch of dried twigs on the ground before him, and they crack loudly under his feet. You freeze in your tracks, your eyes fixed on the huts ahead. Swiftly and silently, they leave their huts, creeping like cats stalking their prey. They move on two legs, although they appear better suited to loping on all fours. You turn and run for all you are worth, this is their territory and they know every fold in the ground. Swiftly they gain on you, forcing you to stand and fight. If you have a bow and wish to use it, turn to 28. If you have a fire seed and wish to throw it, 207. If you wish to draw a hand weapon, 346. It's the first time we could use a fire seed. I'm kind of curious to see what happens. Throw the fire seed? Yes, yeah, so oh my, yeah, throw the fire seed. The fire seed bursts into flames blinding your pursuers with its sudden glare. You seize the opportunity to dive into the thick undergrowth that borders the track. Pyduck follows as you crawl towards the cover of the trees. Right. The hysterical howls of the Gagrim fill the night as you scramble through the foliage. By chance you stumble on the track, it skirts around the edge of the encampment and disappears to the north. It seems to be deserted. That's This is the same number as if we ignored the hut. It's the same secret <laughs> We should have just ignored the huts. Yeah, that's a waste of time. We wanted seat. to say hi, though, and it was a worthwhile thing. Sort of. Actually, it wasn't worthwhile. We just lost the fire seed. Yeah. But we got, like, six of them, so we're fine. An hour passes, and you breathe a sigh of relief. Glad to have left the Gagrim settlement far behind. We'll go arrest and press on along the track until you reach a promontory of rock on the northwestern tip of the island. There you stop and snatch a few hours sleep while you wait for the dawn. Day breaks, and, and the view it brings fills you with awe. Perched on this rocky peak, you can see the sheer vastness of the swamp in all its frightening glory for the first time. 
Paito activates the Star Guider and scans the horizon. But before even but before its telltale clicks are heard, your eagle eyes have spotted the glint of a temple's calorium spire. Calorium spire? Yeah. To the west, beyond the sea, a sickly green black vegetation stands the temple of Oridio, imprisoned but uninfected by the swamp. The howl of the Gargam echo echoes across the island, and you make your descent by rope and vine into the wetlands below. You reach the rocky, bit, rocky base and set off to, across the mudflats. Following the Star Guider's signal now, that the spire is hidden by a swamp mist. Pick a number from the random number table. I guess. All right. <laughs> so we've just see reached if we the made it or not. So. If you want to find out what we picked from the random number table, you have to make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and get ready for the next episode when we find out how far away from the spire we are and what randomness has in store for us. It looks pretty you equal. Actually, yeah, you five, actually six, have to nine. like the next video. Yes, well. hit that like button. <laughs> you better. I swear Force them into it. Ooh -hoo. If I see the views and the likes don't match up, there's going to be hell to pay. Don't make me bring oh. out that summer sword. Bitch slap your ass with it. <laughs> Orbital strike! Orbital. 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 <laughs> Alright, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys later. Take care, everybody. Oh, bye-bye for now. <laughs>